It seems like every time I look in the media, there are stories about Poles being racist or overtly territorial, overly nationalistic. And as there are some pretty extreme sentiments here from time to time, I can't help but identify with the nature that Poles approach their country. I want you to imagine this. It's the year 2017. You're a school child, and the first thing that you see every day are bullet holes in the school that you attend. This is one of the few realities that many Poles live with. They have to look at the scars of the past. They know what is at stake and what could be lost. I'd ask you, can you honestly blame them for being overly or rightfully protective of what they have and what was lost for so many years? On today's episode of Cult America, we are exploring the battle scars of Warsaw to see what remnants remain of a very violent period of this country's history. Guiding me today will be my good friend Mikołaj Janusz, who's enthusiastic about his home city Warsaw, and he'll share with us a few special secret locations. Mikołaj, hey. Yeah, hi Ryan. So you're looking today for battle scars of Warsaw, yeah? Indeed, thank you so much for agreeing to help me out. Normally you're asking people questions, but today yeah. I'm going to be the one asking you questions. Yeah, great, let's go, yeah. Uh, this is a statue of a young resistant fighter. This is uh, actually Mm, thank you. See often on the cars from Warsaw, and uh, it's uh, a very well known uh, thing, but uh, and very beautiful. But the first thought of people to see it is that the little kids were fighting in the Warsaw uprising, but they didn't actually. Mm, there was no weapons to give it to kids, and. Uh, and nobody wanted to keep, keep to fight. They were fighting, of course, but uh, you know, transporting information, uh, preparing uh, and uh, distributing food, uh, the orders from commands to, uh, to, 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 to members of the Warsaw Uprising. So it was their, their way to fight, but this is, of course, a symbol of uh, those little kids uh, who were involved in, in the uprising. So this really commemorates the resistant fighters who were children but yeah. supported the infrastructure logistics more than yeah. actually going on the front lines. Everybody fight uh, the way he, he could. Thank you for showing me that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. The next place we visited was extremely disturbing. It was a monument located in the place where Germans transported over 300,000 Jewish victims from the Warsaw Ghetto to their deaths in extermination camps, Treblinka and those in the Lublin district. Yeah, this is Umschlagplatz. The words Umschlagplatz is like transport ramp because uh, the important thing in the Nazi ideology was the humanization of victims. And also, uh, you, you, you won't say uh, Umschlagplatz about a station to transport people, but to transport uh, cows or any kind of animals. I read that these are the most common names that you'd find uh, with Jewish citizens of Poland back in those times. And it's just kind of the, the general nature, yeah, that yeah. this uh, Emilia, mm -hmm. it's, not just one in, it's not just one individual, but it's yeah. the general Emilia, right? Yeah. Uh, all the Emilias that have like, left. Like the number of people who were killed, who were taken to death from here. So uh, I think, yeah, one name is for several, for, for last maybe. The, this element was uh, changed into a, uh, into a sculpture, uh -huh. but it's uh, actually the real uh, fragment of uh, railway construction. You would never guess it just walking through here. Another interesting place we visited was the museum, formerly Pavia Prison. Since 1863, it was a political prison with male and female departments. About 100,000 prisoners that were sent to Paviak prison in the period between 1939 and 1944 were killed in executions. On the walls of the house, notice boards, even on the sidewalks, appeared inscriptions, Paviak, we will get revenge. So uh, in, in 43, they start to uh, do mass executions, like, uh, you know, to show, to, 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 to terrorize uh, 
uh, people, and it became a symbol of, of you know, brutality and uh, of uh, the crimes uh, for, for Polish people. Because you know that we know we all know about uh, death camps and uh, things, the, 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 the horrible things that were that took place there. But then nobody has this, uh, you know, this knowledge, and uh, and crimes uh, made. Uh, in Paviak and outside the Paviak was visible for everybody, so it's, uh, it's, it, it was symbolic. It is kind of interesting because if you look at Majdanek, for example, mm, this yeah. concentration camp in the middle of Lublin, mm. they were still kind of concealing the actual murder, where here in the middle of Warsaw, the country's capital, they were advertising murder. This was yeah. like a, a theater of death, yeah. basically. Oh, this is a soldier that were uh, kill after um, after killing of Kutcher. It was a Nazi, one of Nazi chief, I think, one of most important in Poland, and uh, he, he he had his office here, and he was he was killed by Polish uh, resistance. As you can see here, this is very drastic because this uh, sign is made uh, made of father who's crying of his uh, loss, and the, as we can see. Uh, in Onpaviak where were kept, tortured and executed uh, his wife, 40 years old, uh, daughter, eight, 18 years old, uh, son, 17, and little son, 7 years old. He said he's his uh, uh, saddest than the Hyok uh, yeah. from Bible. And so probably he's, he's you know, not turning against God knowing that those horrible things uh, happened to him, but he's uh, like believing God all the time. You know, I have a seven-year-old daughter. Yeah. And it yeah. sickens me to imagine what kind of monster would be capable to torture and execute a child like that. Yeah. The whole family, but you know, the, the child. Mm. Yeah. And this was happening here. It's crazy, I mean, that's Warsaw. This yeah. is, our camera operator, Maciek, mm. lives in this neighborhood. Like, we come to this neighborhood and it has a really dark history. Our final location was the Reduta Bank Polskiego. It was a building that used to be a Russian bank. Later it became a Polish national loan fund and finally a Polish bank. Today it's used for creative events and special conferences. Its historic interior makes it very original and charismatic. During the Warsaw Uprising, many fights took place in front of the bank. Today, it bears the deep scars of war. The, the, the upper part is rebuilt, but uh, the lower part looks exactly the same, like it looks after uprising. It was, um, it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, so many fragments of yeah. ammunition hit it that yeah. the building takes on like a, a new yeah, texture and, and also, you know, the neck was kind of a lot of explosion there because mo most of buildings were destroyed. With the comforts of the modern world, it could be very easy to forget how fragile yeah. our humanity is, our civilization is, and just a little bit of too much sick ideology. And here you have it. As I just imagined, there was some someone behind a trigger, someone pulled a trigger. Yeah. It made this hole. And there's just countless, and they're different sizes, you know? Yeah, because I like, think they're like machine guns, just were... Just like painting a picture. Yeah. I mean, look at this one. This one's very specific. It almost looks as if someone has drilled, you know, drilled this. And uh, if you move up a little bit, the uh, holes become larger. I could imagine that that could, you know, shrapnel. Wow, look at this one. I mean, look at it. It, it has shattered mm. this like glass, you know? It's, it's like stone. shattered glass, but it's a stone. Yeah. I always used to think that I would run away in the time of war. But then when we went to that former prison and heard the story of the seven-year-old who was yeah. tortured, amongst many others, you could kind of understand how a father would be willing to run into this barrage of craziness. After seeing such things, you don't want to run. You can die, but you don't want to run. You, you, you want to fight. 
You know, there are some things so categorically horrific that a human being cannot find the words to summarize, encompass, or embody an experience. Whenever I make these battle scar videos, I'm really left dumbfounded at how thin the line is between civilization and disaster, holocaust, death, Armageddon, in a sense. And that might sound dramatic, but I'm sure that those people whose children do not exist today did feel a sense of Armageddon in their final thoughts. These memories are stashed everywhere in Warsaw, and these memories are worth preserving, observing, and respecting. Please write me in the comment sections below if you'd like to see another edition of the Battle Scars of Warsaw, and special thanks to my guests for helping me find these very unique locations today. My name is Ryan Sokesh. Thank you for watching.